Hi, it's Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and this week's Chalk Talk is an interesting rhythm strip from a 12 lead. As you can see on the left-hand side, we have three simultaneous leads. And as you look at the forest, you can see there almost appears to be like group beating. There's a certainly a group of four, and then there's another group here and some here, but these very prominent pauses are present, and the idea is we have to figure out what's causing the pause. Now, just as a prelude, most people think about two things that can cause a pause like this. It could be either a sinus pause, or there could be some kind of AV block that's going on. And we'll explore each of these after we take a closer look at the tracing. So I will zoom in a bit. Now we're taking a closer look at the trees, and we can see that there is a P wave in front of this first QRS, and there also appears to be a P wave in front of the second QRS. If we bring up a pair of calipers, we can measure the PR interval of this first beat to catch the beginning of the P wave and the beginning of the QRS and bring it down to the grid. We can see that there's a PR interval that's over 200 milliseconds. It looks like about 230 milliseconds. And if we look at the second beat, we can see the PR is similar. So if the PR is 230 milliseconds, it looks like we have a first degree AV block here. But then what happens is we've got this pause. Now, most people will look for second degree AV block. If we set these calipers for the P to P interval and move them over, we would have expected a P wave to land right here if second degree AV block were present. But there's no P wave here, so you can't really call second degree AV block. If we make a mark here and then move those calipers over, it appears that the next P wave occurred on time. Isn't that interesting? So if we were to presume that this is a sinus pause and that the next P wave occurs on time, then there is a phenomenon known as sinoatrial exit block with the idea that the sinus node fired but could not get out to the atrial myocytes because those pathways leading out into the atria were blocked and did not conduct. And this is something that we do see fairly often as a reflection of sick sinus syndrome. Let's keep on looking at this strip. You have another pause here. And if we take the P to P interval and move it over, we can see that where we would have expected a P wave, there is no P. But if we make a mark and move our calipers over, we can see the next P wave is pretty much on time. And so at first glance, it would appear that there is a sinus pause, but it seems to be consistent with SA exit block. And then following that, we can see that the sinus rhythm resumes and you have one-to-one -one conduction with just a first degree AV block. It certainly second degree AV block appears out of the running here because we do not see a P wave that occurs on time that blocks. But as Steve Jobs used to say, there's just one more thing. If you have some experience in reading ECG monitor strips, you may have noticed something that I didn't point out before. We'll zoom in again. And if you've been through my course and you've watched my Chalk Talks, you'll probably have picked this out already. And then if you examine the P, Q, R, S, and T wave of these beats here, P, Q, R, S, and T wave, you'll notice that the T wave of this beat preceding the pause looks different. It looks different because there's a very rapid bump that you can even see in this lead compared with the normal T waves. And that bump is a premature atrial contraction. You have a PAC that lands very soon after the QRS complex. And because it's premature, it blocks in the AV node. And so it's not followed by a QRS complex. And that results in a pause that ends with the next sinus beat. If we take our calipers that are set up for the P to P interval and measure from the PAC, we see that this sinus beat was delayed for just about 200 milliseconds or so. It got delayed because it actually takes about 100 milliseconds for this PAC to get into the sinus node, reset it, and then for the next impulse to come back out again. So indirectly, we're actually measuring the sinoatrial conduction time, which I talk about in my expert level course when we're dealing with electrophysiologic testing and determining sinus node function. So this is all to be expected, this delay in the next sinus beat, but really what we're dealing with is a blocked PAC, resulting in a pause that resembles a sinus pause, but it's really not. So the third possibility that I conveniently left out is a non-conducted or blocked PAC. 
So that's what we have here. We have frequent PACs that are so early that the AV node fails to conduct them because it's refractory. Here it is again. You can see it's superimposed on the T wave and because it's so early, the AV node fails to conduct it. So it's a very common arrhythmia. You really need to look for these P waves because if you don't look for them, you won't find them. So I hope that was helpful. And until next time, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy. Thanks for watching.